everyone welcome to another video today's video we're going to do an updated uh, walkthrough of my 1998 mitsubishi montero kind of wanted to do this uh, about a year ago but just never had the time the reason i'm doing this video i've been getting a lot of uh, people inquiring uh, about the montero whether it be uh, what, what kind of roof rack you have uh, what kind of lights you have you know various things on the montero on the, my youtube and then our Instagram page. So I figured it was about time to go ahead and do an updated walkthrough video and just to cover those things and hopefully uh, that answers questions of anyone who's, I guess, takes interest in it, whoever's following the build. So this video is a phase three uh, walkthrough and I've done a phase one video uh, in the past and uh, phase two uh, walkthrough video uh, a few years ago. To give you an idea, uh, when I got the Montero, to give me more of a path uh, of the build, to keep me kind of organized and have some target goals and milestones to achieve, to keep me focused on certain things I wanted to do with the Montero, I broke it down into five phases. So uh, phase one was really focused on trying to get it back to a good uh, starting point, which means doing all the maintenance on it, um, the water pump, all that stuff, the timing belt, and the engine, the transmission, transfer case, get it all running right because it is a 20 year old vehicle when I got it. Uh, it was a single owner and the previous owner took really good care of it, but there were some miscellaneous things that broke along the way in the interior. There were some panels that were broken. I just wanted to fix that up and clean, clean it overall. So that was phase one, that was the focus on phase one. Um, phase two, uh, the focus on that one was to get it, I guess, trail ready to go off road. Uh, so it was basically wheels and tires. Um, we got the roof rack on it and I got some auxiliary, uh, auxiliary lights, which were mix and match. They were all gifted during the time. So I just put them on and uh, we went on some off-road trips, we went camping, nothing really ser serious, no overlanding per se, uh, but it allowed us to go off-road and enjoy, I guess, uh, the benefits and the calmness and peacefulness of nature. So stage three is what this is, and stage three's focus was to uh, overhaul the suspension. I knew at some point when I got the Montero, uh, the suspension needed to be replaced at some point. It was still okay. Uh, the factory adjustable shocks were ju uh, fine, but um, within that time period from the when I got it till I believe uh, a year and a half ago when I did this, the suspension upgrade, uh, they, they failed. So phase three was an overhaul of the whole suspension. Um, I changed the lighting setup to one single brand and I just added a few things here and there uh, for it. Now, Stage four, the focus on that is building a rear storage slash sleeping platform and maybe go with a simple uh, solar setup, I'm not trying to overland or do any of that stuff. Just if we do uh, start the camp, we can camp for at least one or two days, maybe three, not having issues and be kind of comfortable. Um, there's a, a couple other things I want to do uh, on stage uh, four. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and upgrade the brakes and that would require me to change the wheel and tire setup. So that's the plans for stage four and maybe I complete my full lighting setup. And stage five, that is going to be the last major modification change that the Montero will go through. And that will entail either doing a motor swap, rebuilding the, uh, the 3.5 that's currently in it, refreshing the transmission, lower reduction transfer case gears and re-gearing the Montero. I'm leaning going 490s. If by some miracle I can come across 529s from uh, a world spec Pajero, uh, I will do it. But that's going to be later down the road. Uh, we have future plans to possibly be moving out of floor, getting closer to mountains. So that would be kind of perfect. I can utilize those upgrades because we'll be in the mountains, higher elevation, there'll be more uh, climbing situations where I can take advantage of those modifications. So yeah, the, the build on this Montero is five stages and that's how I keep myself focused on the build path 
and not kind of stray away from certain things. That's just my way of building the vehicle. That's always kind of my way of building all my other vehicles, plans, these goals, these milestone goals to eventually get to where I want to go. So one of the things I didn't do when I got to Montero was do uh, a walkthrough video of it completely stocked. So what I'm going to do is go over some of the things uh, on this Montero as, as it is when it came from the factory. 1998 was the first year Mitsubishi did, I guess, a refresh on the design on it. Previous years uh, were considered called the narrow body. Uh, so from 92 to 97, the, uh, those Monteros looked different exteriorly. There are two models. There is a base model LS and then there was an SR uh, model or trim. Uh, the SR was obviously the more fully loaded, had more of the cool stuff, um, much like this model here. The big difference between the 90, especially the 94 to 96, uh, the SRs had the same 3.5 liter V6, but it was dual cam, except for 97. 97, for some reason, Mitsubishi didn't offer the dual cam uh, 3.5. It went to single cam, but from 94 to 96, they had dual cam V6. 94 through 96 also had 463 gears. Um, I think 97 to 2000, they have the 427s. So biggest difference with the SR models from the 90, 94 to 97 is for the flares, they had their traditional cladding flares, basically an add-on to the existing uh, sheet metal. So the flares would come out, it's your typical 80s, 90s flares. But for the 98 to uh, 2000s, Mitsubishi did what they called the blister fenders. And as you see, it's all, there's no cladding as far as the flares. It's all in the sheet metal design. As you can see, the uh, it, come, it protrudes out and it goes all the way till Till to the back, and these were called referred as the blister fenders. So that's the main visual difference that you can that you see between the previous Monteros from '92 to '97 to the '98 in 2000s. So '98, '99, through for this body style, the Mitsubishi offered the winter package. So previous uh, generation Monteros had a base LS and then an the SR model. Uh, for this body style, Mitsubishi had just a base. They didn't really have any trim models. Um, is Technically, if you look this up in VIN, it just shows its base. Basically, it's either a Montero and if you wanted the winter package, which this has. So the winter package basically gives you a lot of the stuff that the previous years had except just a different body style so the first thing on the uh, winter package that you can tell it is is it had the headlight washers right here so the non winter package models didn't have the washer nozzles the winter package uh, models had them pretty cool feature uh, this was something they offered in 1998 so that's pretty cool also the winter package had the fog lights the base ones i believe did not a few other things that the winter package monteros had was they had heated side mirrors let's open this up they had leather seats uh, most of them had the sunroof I've encountered it a few times. I don't believe all winter package Monteros had it, but like the SR in the previous years, uh, there was an available uh, adjustable suspension. So with the adjustable sus suspension, you had three settings. So soft, medium, and hard. And they came factory with adjustable uh, dampening uh, shocks. So depending on the terrain, you can have those three settings for type of ride comfort you want. Um, so that's the indicator in the dash and then I relocated it to my center console so there's the hard setting and soft setting and then if you in the middle it's just the medium setting 
on here. So if I just show you here, so that's hard, soft, and then medium setting. So the cool thing is, this was an option back in 98, 99. Uh, the shocks had these little actuators up top and then um, they would uh, turn, adjusting the damping on the factory shocks. The, the one thing is there was no aftermarket upgrade option for them. So it was only factory and eventually they became NLA, no longer available. So if they went out, if you could source them, great. If not, you're kind of stuck uh, to either try to stay with them, or find them, or upgrade your shocks and strokes. Honestly, it was a cool feature. It did work for a while for me, but eventually the shocks uh, blew out. I liked the feature. It was really cool. Um, don't get me wrong, but since there was really no options, I just, re I just upgraded the suspension with aftermarket uh, kits, which I'll cover that later. Uh, another thing that the SRs had, I mean the winter package, my bad, was the rear factory locker. So that's the button right there, rear differential lock. The SRs had them in previous years and 98 and 99 Monteros um, were the only ones that had them in 2000, the last year of this body style. They did not offer uh, a fact rear factory locker. So all the Monteros had basically their Super Select uh, four-wheel drive. So that's your two high, four high, four high lock, it, low, center lock, four low, and um, center lock, uh, center lock. So they all had the uh, center locking differential. Just the difference is you didn't have the rear differential i mean the rear diff lock for the uh non winter package non sr models and another thing that the uh this body style that was different from the previous years prior to the 98 model is uh mitsubishi upgrade the headlights to have these crystal lens um previous years had the fluted lens so these uh, provide much better light and they look better. Cool thing is, they're glass. They're not plastic. I don't have to worry about them fading. So the next thing I'm going to cover is lighting. So the biggest difference between my previous lighting setup on phase two, uh, phase three, I decided and found the single brand that all my lighting, auxiliary lighting is going to be, which is LED Colite. Okay. Um, that video will be right here. I did a long-term review on that just recently. So I am planning to add more auxiliary lighting once I figure out there's some other things I want to do first prior before that. But uh, the, the first thing is I have these uh, LED Co-Light Defender Series. They're seven inch. They have the light covers on them. So I'll take them off. All right, they're pretty bright. So I got those as my spotlights. Um, I have the Rob 2 series as my ditch lights. And then for the rear are the uh, G2 3 inch flush mounts right there. 
the reason they're there is, which covers my next point, is I upgraded these taillights to, uh, I guess, JDM aftermarket ones. These are not OEM Mitsubishi. These are uh, aftermarket JDM ones. They're, they have a crystal uh, look to them, while the OEM ones have the fluted look. Uh, the biggest difference between the OEM and the JDM, the OEM taillights uh, didn't have the backup light. So it was just your stop, driving, and signal. And actually, you're on the USDM, the backup lights were actually right here. So what I did, since I upgraded to the those, the JDMs, um, I decided I wanted rear lighting. This was a perfect spot. Didn't take much modification to fit those three inch. They fit kind of near perfectly on there. So I used that and I independently wired those to switch up front, which I'll cover that when I get to the next session when I cover the interior. So yeah, that's the lighting. Uh, the USDM Monteros had this Montero badge. The JDMs had the light, so I removed that and put the fender lights. That's a OEM Mitsubishi Japan OEM fender light. Wired it to these JDM Pajero corner lights. The USDMs are all, all amber with a single dual filament bulb. The JDMs are two bulbs for your turn and your driving. And these are authentic. Okay, auto. So those are OEM. I used to have aftermarket JDM ones and um, the lens quality, they just fade. After six months, they start to yellow. Uh, these are actually used from the Philippines and, and these things are mint. So the OEM quality rocks. And then um, I upgrade the fog lights. So these are not LED co lights. These are from Amazon egg pod lights. They're amber. And I replaced those. I got rid of the factory OEM ones. They just didn't put the light output I liked. And they were hard to change the bulb. And uh, I wasn't really happy with the brightness. So I uh, took the OEMs out, OEM ones out and put found these... Uh, egg pod ones that fit very nicely in there I just made my own custom brackets plenty bright and what I did last year also is I did LED projector retrofit on the factory uh, headlights so I actually got these from another member um, I got them pretty cheap um, I think he said they weren't working correctly so that's the reason gone cheap so basically I had to take them apart because uh, they weren't they're were sitting all weird so I fixed that I fixed the way they're sitting and then um, he was right when you do plug them the light output was not that great so basically when you hit your high beams would be the low beam light output and then you hit your high beams um, the actuator here to get your high beams wasn't working so it's just something with the wiring on the uh, Monteros did some research on the websites and found out that dapper lighting made this this adapter thing for H4 for H4 lights so basically it does something electrically like a relay to put the right amount of power for your low beams and your high beams and that solved my issue so I got those from Dapper Lighting. Uh, these work great. This is probably the, one of the best modifications I've done on my Montero. Uh, I had LED drop-in bulbs in here. Um, like uh, you hear the complaints, everyone saying you're blinding everyone. Um, I kind of, I, I did, I was guilty for that. Then I got some Pia Platinum ones, which were a lot better. They had some type of cutoff. And, um, but still, it wasn't the best so I just went ahead and did a retrofit and these are much better to cut off it's like clean um, it's just worth it man if you if you want to be not an a-hole and do it the right way and just have a nice clean light man do the pro, uh, projector retrofit plus it looks really cool I mean I just love the look of it um, I'm planning to do another uh, set of these um, 
to have a, achieve a different look. Uh, even though I'm happy with these, uh, there's a look I want, I'm trying to go for. All right, next is wheels and tires. Uh, technically, I got these wheels in phase two. Um, so these wheels are from Japan, right? They, uh, the hub bore is like 108. These are perfect for um, the uh, Montero and uh, the Land Cruisers. So these are three-piece work Deerfield. Uh, they're 15 by 8, negative 13 offset. So when I got them, they were pretty bad shape. So I had them, I re, uh, restored them. I wanted to keep the Deerfield, work Deerfield uh, logo on one of the spokes. Actually, my spare tire, I was able to source another one as my spare. I wanted to try to retain that during the restore, but it was impossible. This is, this is like baked in, it's not a separate sticker. Uh, but the wheels, when I got them, were just in bad shape. There were a lot of oxidation uh, on the lip and on the face. So I just said, you know what? It was much like this, but just bad. So I just decided, you know what? Uh, just restore them. Uh, I'm very happy with them. I like the look. I love the wheels. Tires, I had mud terrains previously. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I hated them. Um, yeah, they were good off-road. They were good for mud and all that good stuff. If you know, if you had any knowledge about off-roading, mud tires and sugar sand is not great because uh, the mud tires actually dig you deeper. Uh, didn't like it. And plus, the one other thing, since this was my daily, semi-daily now, they were just noisy. I, I, I thought I could get used to it, ignore it. But they got to the point they were just really noisy. They were starting to cup, and as when they were starting to cup, uh, I just hated it. So uh, last year, after I did the suspension overhaul, uh, I decided to go with Kenda tires. And when I got these, they just released this model, their AT2 tires, like a year before. And uh, I read the reviews of the people that had them. They said they loved them. And people, I had some friends that had Kenda tires, and they, they loved them. So I bit the bullet and got them. And I'm telling you, I love these tires. They're super quiet for all-terrain. They ride really good, and I really had no issue when I've gone off-road with them. Um, I love these tires. I mean, I would recommend these tires to anyone. Um, they look great. I get a lot of compliments from people asking, oh, what kind of tires are those? What's Kenda? Blah, blah, blah. But, yeah, they, I mean, these are great, great tires. I love them can't go wrong with them so if you're if you're in the market for some tires and you heard about Kenda and you have questions about it man uh, I'd say get them and these are great tires so that's my wheel and tire setup so next is suspension and brakes my brakes are just they're, they're the standard OEM um, I got at the time, I don't know if they're available, but my, my dealer, my parts guy said they were the last set of the uh, Mitsubishi remanufactured front calipers for the Montero. I replaced those last year. Uh, I was just getting tired of aftermarket, uh, the ones failing. I had replaced them twice. One was Centric, and I forgot what the other brand was. They failed me within uh, like a year and a half. So I just said, screw it. I'm going to get OEM. Fortunately, I was my parts guy was able to find me, so I have OEM front remands with power stop. I believe the Z32 carbon ceramic pads, Z23 carbon ceramic pads, and centric rotors. Also for my brakes, I have Beeline Performance stainless steel brake lines on all four corners. Uh, one of the planned upgrades, which will be planned for, like I believe, phase four, is upgrading to 16-inch uh, front brakes from the Montero Sport. So obviously, if I replace those brakes, I'm going to have to get new wheels and tires. So, yeah, man, it's a good opportunity to upgrade. So, yeah, 
and I have the ASIN manual hubs. So cool thing about these, the benefit is these is since these are CVs up front, if you were if they were to fail, the front ones, um, you can uh, set these on the free setting, and you'll be able to keep driving based on uh, going off the uh, rear wheels. So you're not going to be stuck. You can still able to drive your vehicle. Good thing to do too is I did notice a slight increase in miles per gallon. Because even though you have, if you have the auto hubs from factory and you have it in two wheel drive, it's still spinning the front to a certain extent. Uh, when you have the manual hubs, um, it frees up. It frees up the from spinning. So you're technically truly on two wheel drive, rear wheel drive. And I, I noticed slight increase in miles per gallon and the truck has a little bit more pep. So the suspension, I told you, I overhauled it last year. That is the main milestone for phase three. So I have front Dobinson shocks. And then I have a brand new OEM Mitsubishi upper control arm. Brand new OEM Mitsubishi sway bar link. Siberian bushings front. I got the lower control arm is upgraded I have uh, Dobinson's rear springs and then uh, you can see the Siberian bushings on the trailing arms Siberian bushing uh, rear sway bar link and then that's the rear Dobbison shocks and then I have sway away torsion bars and then I upgrade the rear pan hard, pan hard bar pan hard bar or adventure driven designs adjustable pan hard bar this is a must if you lift your Montero all right, next section is my steering. Uh, basically, my steering is just stock. Um, I did a steering refresh, uh, I believe, in 2019. So, so that's uh, inner, outer tie rods. Um, so the, everything, all the inner tie rods, Pitman arm, they're all uh, Senki triple fives. And then um, right here, the eye arm. That's an OEM Mitsubishi one. But inside is Adventure Driven Designs uh, Kingpin upgrade. So basically, if you're running bigger tires, especially 32s and up, you want to upgrade the Kingpin because internally, inside these, uh, this uh, Isla arm, there are like plastic bushings and they will fail because you have the bigger tires. So they can't, the, the Adventure Driven Design one is a Cromoly a kingpin with brash bushings so it's a huge upgrade so if you if you are um, if you have a gen 2 Montero definitely look into and you're running bigger tires definitely look into that upgrade um, and you won't have any problems with your steering all right next we're gonna cover the motor um, nothing special here it's stock uh, there's no upgrades on the motor other than the maintenance that I've done to it. It's a bone stock, 3.5, 6G74, Mitsubishi V6. Um, great motor, never had a single issue with it, other than the bad valve stem seals, uh, which they're notorious of being bad. So I do blow out some smoke during long idles. But other than that, it's a great, reliable motor. Um, they tend to get a bad rap, but honestly, if you do the maintenance on these, these will run and run, and they'll run smooth. I, like I said, I'm on top of the maintenance on this, so I've, I've thank God, thank goodness, I don't have any issues with it. But these are great motors. I mean, Mitsubishi's been using these 6G7, two, four, five for years, and the reason they use them for years is they're good motors. They've, they're on many Mitsubishi vehicles, 
and they're even in a lot of the um, Dodge vehicles during the DSM years. So you'll see them in Dodge Caravans, uh, Sebrings, and Avengers. So it's a really good motor, but it's bone stock. I mean, nothing really here to see other than the underhood lighting. That's the, I guess, only upgrade I did on the engine bay. Uh, yeah, video link here on the corner. But yeah, that's basically it. It's a stock motor, um, 250,000. I just hit 250 on it uh, earlier in the month. It's still running good. All right, next we're gonna cover is the interior. First is the floor mats. I just recently put these in. These are Cat Tough Liner all weather mats. Link again, right here. I did a video on that. A uh, great fit. I mean, they're cut to fit, but honestly, they fit pretty well. I didn't have to do much cutting. Um, I wanted some all weather mats. Unfortunately, there wasn't a company here in the US like WeatherTech or whatever that made a molded like uh, floor mat. I did read there is a company in China that does make them. Uh, I think you can get them through AliExpress. I was very hesitant to getting them, but a fellow member got his, got them for his Gen 2. And um, they look really good. The fitment's nice. He's really happy with them from the pictures he posted. I, I like them. So I think I'm going to bite the bullet and get those in the near future. But yeah, that's my, uh, that's my floor mats for the, for now. Uh, next is all my dash lighting is upgrade LED. Uh, that's one of the first things I did. When I got to Montero, I replaced all with LED. So plenty bright, uh, gives it a nice cleaner look. It's bright at night. So the dash lights, center pod, HVAC controls are LED. So I have an ultra gauge here. Pretty cool product. Uh, you can monitor all your vitals of your engine. You have like seven pages or eight pages of stuff you can um, you can monitor like air fuel, um, miles per gallon, voltage, your O2 sensors, all that good stuff. So if you want to monitor your uh, whatever, whatever it doesn't display here, connects to your OBD port, very easy. There's nothing complicated. You just run the wires and it connects right to your OBD2 port and uh, go. F and then you can just pick whatever you want to display. The factory Gen 2.5s, so I had the compass, oil pressure, and amp, volts. Yeah, that's what I displayed. Um, I got rid of that. Um, I can, since I can see the voltage on here, I didn't really want that in the oil pressure. As long as I have oil, I guess. And then I had the oil low light. I just, I monitor my oil, so I'm not really worried about that. So I was able to get a cluster from Japan, a friend of mine. So. It has the the altimeter and the inclometer. So this is a pretty cool feature. I'm thinking maybe I might upgrade this to like a, a double din with a screen. So if I get more serious on camping and off-roading, I might upgrade this to uh, where you have like, a, I can fit like an eight inch or seven inch tablet and have like maps and stuff like that. Um, I'm really debating and doing that. I'm leaning towards it, but at this moment, I don't really have any use for it since I haven't done any serious camping to utilize it. So for now, I have this uh, Kenwood doubled in uh, head unit. It's, uh, I guess, old in today's standards, but I like it. Folds out, does Bluetooth. Uh, I mean, has great sound. Can't, can't really complain. Um, all my speakers, doors, tweeters, dash, and the two speakers in the back are all Kenwoods. Um, I'm happy with the sound. I'm not trying to make crazy uh, loud music. I just want really good sound. This holds my, this is um, a holder for my walkie-talkie. I have that here. It's mounted. Right now I have my Smith & Wesson knife mounted on here mount my radio my walkie-talkie radio there it's like a holder uh, Broadway mirror all right for my auxiliary lights um, 
those are my switches they're mounted right near the steering rack so that is for my ditch lights I'm trying to get a switch for my spots so that's spot my ditch I'm sorry those are my spot those are my ditch lights and then for my rear, uh, rear lights I wire them to my center console so those are for my rear lights and then uh, I have a the blister boy blister fabs cup holder I did a video on that so that'll be up in this corner the card for that I uh, got a molly panel in my back seat so a flashlight first aid kits emergency seatbelt cutter wind glass breaker uh, some other miscellaneous stuff a headlight type of deal for your head it's for hands free some miscellaneous stuff uh, I'm gonna up upgrade this I want to do a metal panel um, but I'll, I'll do that at some point but I got that in the back seat and in the back so got a storage box with some extra parts in there uh, straps all that good stuff uh, work some extra tools toolbox oil cuz Montero like I said the valves themselves that do burn some oil um, got this clamp here for my little uh, screwdriver thing uh, this is where the six disc CD changer used to sit so I have my uh, jump starter here and my via air inflator pump sits nice and tight snug in there and then I have an inverter right um, I can power some light things here I have it wired to the cigarette lighter just a factory flashlight and then an axe so this here is the next big thing for stage four like I said I want to have a storage type of setup here slash sleeping flat platform uh, table here for uh, cooking prepping food whatever you're gonna do when you do some more serious camping so this is gonna change at some point for stage four I'm just trying to figure out the design thing there uh, with my wife so we're gonna figure that out I also have a roof net so when we do go off-roading kids can put their extra stuff secure it up here so yeah that's basically it all right last is exterior uh, I'm going to cover all the exterior stuff we have on the Montero and I guess that would cover pretty much what this phase 3 build is so starting from the back I got a Lusso Overland Pintle hitch here right here upgraded I have a shackle and then I have a, a 422 hitch slider and then I have a Rhino Rhino USA pin uh, security pin here to keep it secure J20 ladder one reason I got it is when we have the awning or we've had some stuff on the roof my wife mentioned she wished we had a lighter so it gave me a good uh, opportunity to, a reason to upgrade so I got the J20 ladder I believe you can get it through J20 on Facebook or Alan Cassetta um, I think you can go on his website uh, Montero man Montero man gen 1 is the website I think you can get it from there too but this is a J20 uh, ladder I mean this is really good quality I mean it's powder coated and it fits nicely it you can put this on within like less than five minutes even sooner than that rear spoiler I get a lot of questions on this I got the spoiler my uncle got it for me he went to Japan back in 2016 2017 told him I'm shopping for this truck uh, see if you can find a spoiler because the spoilers were never available on the USDM market when they Mitsubishi sold them there, there was an OEM spoiler, 
and on the on JDM and European world market Pajeros. So I told him to find me one. This is not exactly the OEM one, but it's made for a Pajero. So that's the wing. So that wing is how I got it. I believe you can get them on eBay. There's other few members that have had them or have them. And I believe if they said they found them on eBay, I'm not sure if they're still available. If not, then I don't know what to say. But yeah, the, that's where I got it from. Uh, that was damaged when we went off-roading and branch hit it, so it sucks. But anyways, going to here. This is a roof rack. I got that. That was on the phase two build. It's from SoFlow Bumpers, powder coated, stainless steel hardware. It's ARB style. Um, it's holding up very well, especially being exposed to the elements. I, I think I'm going to have to uh, refinish it at some point. I might rhino line it or something because uh, some parts of the rack are fading, the powder coating, and uh, I just want to prevent any further damage to it. But yeah, it's, uh, it's actually made for a Land Cruiser, but it fits to Montero perfectly. My awning is an ARQ four-wheel drive, 270 degree awning this thing is awesome uh, I wish we we don't use it enough but when we do use it it is awesome I've used this for sometimes we'll do some like school events so I'll pop it out uh, like a lemonade stand type of deal uh, but we've used this I haven't used it enough but when we do use it it's awesome it provides great shade it covers everything here to the back it's good quality has built-in LED lights on the arms that come out. Very easy to pop out and put back in. It's being held. Get up here. By uh, these mounts from Gzilla. They're, uh, I guess, billet. So I have three mounts holding this up with stainless steel hardware. I'm actually looking getting racks bracks mounts so I can remove the awning on and off I don't want to keep this awning on the Montero throughout the year because uh, my Montero is unfortunately not garaged it's exposed to the elements and I don't want it to damage the sun's going to UV rays damage the material so I'm looking at getting racks bracks where when I eventually get that I'll show you it's easily you can mount and dismount your awning whatever pretty quickly um, that is my plan. I'm going to get that. Uh, well visor, vent visors. Um, they're not shiny anymore. They're faded. Uh, I am probably going to take these off and get new ones, fresh ones. Uh, but they're, they're still holding up. There's no cracks. They're just not shiny and pretty. But these are great, great quality. I uh, got this hood deflector. From someone I have like a side business I bartered some parts so I got him some parts in exchange for that this is a hood deflector from a Pajero I believe in Malaysia uh, right here is the Joust bull bar I got that from a buddy in the Philippines Joust is usually chrome I actually uh, plasti dip this so I'm gonna have to re plasti dip it because it's been like four years so it's time to refinish it Got a Pajero front skid plate. Pretty cool, Plasti dipped it. Next part of the build, uh, phase four, I'm gonna be going with a full front to rear under carriage armor. And that will be from Adventure Driven Design. So pretty excited about that. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, this was a gift from my wife. This is from a Pajero Evo. This is actually a Pajero Evo front grille. This is not authentic. Mitsubishi. This is a replica. I don't know how she was able to find it, but she got it for me for Christmas. But yeah, this is Pajero Evo style. As if you see the Pajero Evo, it's the same style grill. Uh, fitment's actually really good for a replica. Uh, but yeah, I, I love to look at this. Uh, it's black right now. I'm undecided if I'm gonna paint it white or silver to match the truck. But I, I right now I'm happy with the black. Uh, this is actually an uh, OEM Mitsubishi Rally Art emblem. 
obviously a Mitsubishi triple diamond emblem. All right, the other side, I got a Fisker's axe and Crazy Beaver shovel. I'm planning to get rid of the shovel. I'll probably get a new axe or refinish this one. Um, I'm leaning towards getting the D Demos D M O S shovel. Yeah, I'm planning to get that. It's a little pricey, so I'm waiting on to get that. But I'm gonna get be getting rid of the Crazy Beaver shovel at some point. And then I have these X Bull traction boards mounted up. Uh, I'm gonna very soon bite the bull and get some Max tracks and uh, get those. Um, I've had to use these X Bulls twice, but yeah, I think I'm gonna go in Max tracks because I believe these X Bulls, they're, I think one of them is cracked from the last time I used it. So, uh, but yeah, I got traction boards up there. So there you go, that's the uh, phase three walkthrough video of my 98 Montero. Um, so that covers basically what its current state is as of right now. So yeah, hopefully this answers questions for uh, anyone that has interest in the build. Um, obviously, if you have any other questions that anything that I didn't cover, feel free to comment. I'd be glad to answer it for you. If I uh, make more improvements and uh, continue with the build, uh, then I will make another video on uh, another follow-up walkthrough video when I get to, I guess, stage four. And uh, you'll see what I've been working on. But, uh, yeah, I'm glad. You, thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for watching most of it. But like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to post uh, a comment, and I'll be glad to answer it for you. But like I said, I'm thankful for anyone that's following my channel. If, you, if you're subscribing or you're, if you're first time here and you want to subscribe, I mean, please do, please subscribe. Um, I got a lot more other content, content that I'm planning to do on our channel. So, uh, yeah, I just appreciate it. And hopefully we can, uh, you can follow me as we build this one and my other builds. So uh, thanks again. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, be safe, and I'll see you in the next video. There, guys. Bye.